to get it live streamed so from any moment now we will be live streaming just a little warning about that so feel free to continue chatting but be aware that it will be cleaned around the world <laughs> so three two views which is what we normally get <laughs> <laughs> three from spain two from italy and one from russia is it? i don't know oh, <laughs> it sounds pretty good though <laughs> 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 Right, so welcome to everybody here today. We will begin with the cut again. We'll stand for that. Thank you. So once again, you've been live streams, just some warning there. And welcome to anybody watching on live stream and also in the room here and elected members and staff. Good morning for our last one of these for the year. Oh, no, it's so such a year. Uh, uh, just a wee reminder to say that any criticism or disrespect of elected members and or staff and I have to have a look at you. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> Including <close. laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Any questions? Okay, no laws were broken on the on, on the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any declarations of independence? <laughs> <laughs> Declaration <laughs> of interest. <laughs> Uh, once again, have, if, oh, yes, yeah. I have what's the French festival. Okay. Right, and once again, if you come across something that you suddenly realize, yes, this would be conflict, just raise it at the time. Confirmation of the previous minutes, which I'm sure you've all read. Can I have a move of that? Please? Move. Seconder? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, sorry, Tyrone, the move. Seconded by Katie. Thank you. And uh, that is carried. We'll just move straight on to our public forums. And we want to welcome Richard and Jill Simpson to the table talking about fishing boats and in inshore fishing in Max Peninsula. Welcome. Hello everyone, um, Richard and Joel Simpson from Fisherman's Bay. Now we're here, um, I've provided a little bit of paper here, we've provided this paper, which is a really brief summary of what we're doing. It's brief and we can make it with some photos to help us locate ourselves and I want to talk to it now. Um, the reason we've come at this particular moment in time is because in, uh, a month or so ago, couple of months maybe now um, a, a fishing boat the Astro Carina wrecked itself off our um, in front of our house right on just adjacent to our land against the cliff I've put in some photos in there so you can have a look at what it is if you look in there it helps you get an idea of what happened that happened in the darkness at night okay and when they did the radar um Look at the radar later, and it shows that they were fishing, trawling back and forth, back and forth, about a kilometre out, and then suddenly they just headed in and hit the cliff, and they had to be pulled out. They were lucky to live; they had to be pulled out by helicopter. Now, it's not a not worry about um, safety or anything like that. What I'm concerned about is that on our farm, and we I'm just going to talk about our place, but this could be anywhere on Banks Peninsula. But on our farm, we have protected a hundred hectares of native forest and habitat. It includes the two bays, Red Bay, where the boat wrecked itself on the edge of that, and Shell Bay, which is also part of this, you know, a, a bay area, which you can see from one of the photos there if you look later. 
Um, and what we're really concerned about is that, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars have gone into the con conservation of this area and the trapping and the care for the creatures on the land. That includes white flippered penguins and yellow-eyed penguins. And we know that there are hectares dolphins in the bay. Okay, so what we've got out here is a continual, and, and we've had trawling going on since this. Thing. It's not like they've just decided to out. Now, at the end of this here, I provide, we've provided a, um, a document that was one of the reporters that came told us that she'd recently done a story with for the Astro Karina Rec. One of the reporters said to us, look, I've just written about this to do with along from Timaru and Burning's Flat. So what I'm saying here is that there has been, according to that article, a sort of a gentleman's agreement to stay out 1.8 miles, kilometres, it's a nautical mile apparently, and they are trying to avoid, in that case, along the coast out here, out at um, Birding's Flat, et cetera, the breeding grounds of elephant fish. I'm going to submit and say that I think that yellow-eyed penguins, which are one of our most rare, I think it's the most endangered penguin in the world, and it is rare, and um, a lot of money. I mean, Doc had to come in and take a penguin away. They couldn't catch the other one and um, take it away and look after it for a while because... When the wreck hit the, the um, bay, it lost its 10,000 litres of diesel and 400 litres of oil and refrigerant, which is apparently really, really toxic. Okay, so for a while, we would have as many as 10 or 15 dock people and ECAN and people, I think, from the city council, did we? I can't remember if they were there or not. We had just so many people and reporters, etc. And what I'm really saying is it seems insane to me that we spend masses and masses of money and city council money, some of it, because it supports the Conservation Trust, etc. It seems a very strange thing to spend all that money on protecting our land, you know, our, our, our ecosystems. And then the moment you hit the water, there's nothing. And I'm not exaggerating because I thought that there were a few rules, but people tell me there are no rules. And by someone told me this, I'm really not sure if this is true, but I think if you were to, to look up the bycatch that they're allowed to have, it includes things like hectares dolphins at a rate of apparently 50, which I still can't believe and I don't know. But any, any fishing and collecting of those sorts of creatures is really, really, I mean, do we want to leave it until it's just too late until it's too late to have those special things in our special places because that is what we're doing and so i'm submitting here to ask that you um you remove the sort of the main predator for dolphins and penguins which is us that's probably their worst predator out there really you know at the moment so i'm really saying that it's time that we started to pay attention to this and I'm asking that um, what my submission really is, is that this group and the city council as a whole starts to look at ways. And I don't know the legal um, process that will need to be gone through to start to protect these things. Ours is just one example. I would be really surprised if you didn't go and chat to other people all around all of the bays of Banks Peninsula to find similar stories of fishing boats really, really close. Up. It is amazing how close they come to the shore. 500 metres is not an exaggeration at all. And they're trawling back and forth for hours on end. And you've got white-flippered penguins, yellow-eyed dolphins, uh, penguins, and dolphins, and hectares dolphins. And it's just not acceptable. So my submission is that I would like to see City Council take this up as an issue. I would like this, like this group to pressure them to do that. And I would like to see them actually look at it. This gentleman's agreement from the fishery, you know, from local fishermen. This was the Littleton fishermen, okay? So I'm not against fishing. I just want them to stay further out. I think that, that or maybe you can come up with areas that are really, really vulnerable. And I would say the whole of the eastern bay, of the bays around there, around Hinawai, Pahatu, penguins, look at all that. They're, I mean, they have a, a marine reserve there, but out in front of that bay, there's no protection as soon as you leave the marine reserve. And they're still going out there. How far do dog to uh, go? Mm -hmm. They go two or three kilometres out, don't they? Oh, more than that, yeah, quite a few kilometres, yeah. And we know that for sure because some of our penguins have been tagged in the past. So they're out there swimming out there. They're not just inside the bay. And, I mean, if you look at the bays, I have put photos on this photo of the bay here. It really shows you here 
So you're going to have a, um, a boat trawling across here. This is right above the wreck, that picture you see of the wreck. So the boats are here. I mean, this is this is where the, where the yellow-eyed penguins are, right here, and the boat, they're here. I'm not exaggerating. I've seen them within the last month. So that's probably enough emotional <laughs> <laughs> statements, but I really feel really strongly, and I feel powerless in any way to do anything about this, but I feel that you are the, the rung of power that I can talk to and that perhaps you can go further up the chain and try to make this an issue. I really strongly suggest that you do, because otherwise you will not be part of the governance of an area with really special things. You will not be that anymore because you will have lost them. And I make that clear. It's an obvious it's happening. Thank you. Do you have any questions yeah. from the members? I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and thank you, Richard and Jim. Sorry, Richard. Um, <laughs> it's a question for start, actually. Like, mm -hmm. I think um, is it's an ECAN managed thing, isn't it? The, the, is, it? Is, it is it ECAN or is it? Sorry, well, I'm MPI, the I thought it was MPI. Yeah, okay. Um, because and I, I can just this up as a question if you need need me to, but like it's been raised to me by residents along the coast. Like in, a, in the month up until before that happened, in Birdlings Flat, people were saying mm. fishing boats are like fishing yeah. too close to the yeah. to the coast, and I had raised it with staff. But like it's something that we really we need to get in touch with again about this really or whoever it is. It's just yeah, it's just becoming more and more an issue. It, it doesn't really get worse than this, does it? No, and <laughs> fisheries does nothing. I've rung them on occasion when I see boats too close, just so close, and I ring them up and say, can they be this close? Yes. yes. So it's not like you can... There is no actual protection at all. It's really surprising. Mm -hmm. So what I'm perhaps asking is that this is a group that's, you know, a community... You, know, you are community representatives, mm -hmm. and I really feel that our community needs to start to push mm -hmm. for more protection. Nothing will happen unless it comes from us, because they're not going to initiate yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm um, just thinking about that. Is, is this perhaps something in the vein of the marine reserve area? Mm -hmm. It isn't a our area. Our, our bay is not a marine reserve. No, not it's not currently. But is this? We 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 would consider almost anything. I've always said that I didn't want a marine. Richard wanted a marine reserve, and I've always said because you get an occasional person going down there to catch um, crayfish. Yeah, and line fishing. Yeah, and that's line fine. Right. Yeah. And the acro fishing charter does end up right underneath. I can hear them talking from my garden. You know, just there. So we didn't really want to be as hard as that. We want to say, you know, that I don't think that would really damage a lot of what's there. Mm -hmm. So we would be prepared to go to it because this oh, is we would now. We yeah. would now. I mean, you know, but I, I, I like our coastline to be accessible for people. Don't really want to be exclusive and make it difficult. But on the other hand, I really feel that it, even we feel responsible for just sitting too long on our hands, doing everything we can on the land. And I'm not exaggerating when hundreds of thousands have gone in mm. because I'm not over 25 years. It's not an exaggeration <clears throat> at all. And so not just all that, you know, some of it's our money, but lots of it is governmental money, QE2 money, Bank Special Conservation Trust money, Pest Free money, City Council. City, and City Council money. It's all been little bits here and there for someone to do some trapping to look after those penguins. Mm -hmm. And then the penguin just gets into the water and suddenly all that care is gone. Yeah. And we can sit around saying we want other things, but <coughs> it's time now. To not so we've taken the time to come here. Yeah, um, that's long. Yeah, um, and you'll yeah. yeah, unfortunately, that'll be the last question. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, thank you, Jim. Yeah. Um, I have seen and I have done some voluntary work on penguins around this area, especially there. Actually, that was the first place where I encountered and saw yellow eye penguin. Um, and you're right, they weren't doing anything illegal. Oh. Everything was by the book. Uh, the thing is that um, if we could lobby somehow this board and get to a gentleman agreement or perhaps in the long run, um, our MPs here possibly uh, could facilitate uh, us with this idea that we could come to an agreement that um, fishing is not allowed all around Banks Peninsula. It's quite vital that we, should, we must act now.
Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's been pretty much answered. Yeah, we're doing nothing illegal. Um, and I do support, you know, there, there was questions about the green grounds and all that, but then we've got to be careful that we don't go too far in marine reserves because, you know, you're encroaching on people's livings. The cost of getting these boats out to the sea is quite extensive. And I do suit, understand certain areas have to be protected, but I think you know, the government's been pretty adamant on what areas are reserves and what areas aren't. It's a big area around the whole, yeah. you know, whole country. So I do support it, and a letter would probably help, but you know, much more than that, I can't see where we can go. Yeah, I wasn't asking for you to make a decision. decision. Yeah, I know I that. Mean, yeah, I, yeah. I've actually just said a solution needs to be yeah, found. Solution. And that's what I'm, because I'm aware of it when I eat fish. Mm, yeah. But the thing is, is that what happens, it's like any business, that if one person breaks the rules because they had an agreement with fishermen, they obviously accepted that. But if one of those fishermen starts breaking the rules and going in closer, it literally forces the others. Yeah, yeah. And so that what I'm saying is if you had a firmer rule, then perhaps it might just enable that person to survive, because they won't survive if they keep fishing in there, because um, I think eventually... It'll become so obvious that we can't have it, that they will lose yeah. it. If they do the right thing now, they might survive. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I've got Ben, who's got a comment as well. Hi I, hi, I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. So who was it who arranged the gentleman's agreement between the Fisher people? No, well, that reporter told it. We'd be, we're getting that information from that reporter. So I imagine it's MPI or something like that. Um, the fisheries, perhaps. Right. So but that doesn't, it's not being adhered to. We well, all we know it's not being adhered yeah, to. Yeah, we don't really know because whoever arranged that agreement, which I guess, um, or who brokered it, there must be some mechanism through that to then follow up with with yeah, people who are, who, are, who are breaking it. Um, but my second question is, um, um, you've, you've spoken to other like local conservation groups and biodiversity organisations around the like it, it's not just you guys, is it? Like you've got support from mm. from groups and organisations. We've found members of the Conservation Trust, we, you know, and we are um, we have a QE2 covenant. We talk about mm. I've been talking about this for twenty something years, mm. so it's not like and we've talked to the minister a long time ago when they put the marine reserve out there. We've talked about it then. We have tried. That's why we're here. Mm is that we actually are powerless absolutely, as individuals, as, as just alone. So it's got to be a community-led thing. And we would love to see the council, <clears throat> that's why we're at the council thing, take a stand. I know the council is probably unable itself to do anything. And I realise it's people's livings, but it's all very well continuing doing the wrong thing um, if you... Um, and making a living, because sooner or later, that's not going to be viable anymore. So just like on farms, we need to fence our waterways. Fishermen probably have to have areas they don't go to. I mean, we are not allowed to run our livestock into wetlands. And we've, as farmers, we've set aside, you know, huge areas of land to make it. Yeah, thanks, Joe. So, yeah. so, so the board has, you know, one of their nine key priorities in their board plan is to protect and enhance biodiversity on Banks Peninsula. Um, and, you know, by default, the coastline, um, you know, is certainly, I would think, part of that. Um, the board, I imagine, this, is, this would be my kind of advice, would be looking to support and add their weight to a community-led response, just like you're talking about. So um, I see lots of nods around the table. Yeah, as, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm very interested in this. Yeah, and yeah, I've been very happy to have a reset from anyone to see that I'm getting mm -hmm. yeah. taking action on. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so even some more weight than the board. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> sitting around. Um, yeah, so the board can't make a decision um, in this forum today um, other than to um, to want to ask staff to investigate or, um, yeah, so you could... You know, I mean, it's it's clear that the board would like to support, um, 
uh, an effort that is, you know, doing that and that they recognise mm. the yeah. issue. Definitely. And that's exactly what I was going to say. It's, just, it's totally under what our priorities are on this board that we have talked about many, many times. So it is in, in our lane and um, that is something that we would love to progress further in the areas that we are delegated to give um, and to be able to support you with. So we will look into what we can do there with the assistance of staff and make a note that that's what we would like to do. Yeah. Is there anything more firm that we could see to this point or just to research what, what we can do? Yeah, yeah, that's all you can do in this forum. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Thank very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next, we've got the Acro Heritage Festival Society and the gentleman called Nigel Harrison who would like to speak on behalf of them. You guys want us to come on? Who else have you got with you, Nigel? I've got Leslie Burke Harding and John Harding. Then, John, come on up. Hey everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank <clears throat> as a French Festival Society uh, going into this uh, last French Festival. It was a huge event and it was for that reason we're here this time to discuss the way forward. Here we Oops. Okay, just a little bit about the background of the French Festival. Um, its aims and objectives, and this is out of our constitution, the aims and the objectives from the Agro Festival Constitution, to undertake the organisation and production of festivals for the emphasis on heritage of Agro, including the wider ward area, and to promote the Agro Bay in a cultural sense and to enhance the area's unique heritage. We've gone on to add that we also want it to be fun and family orientated and celebrate the base, etc. We've got a lot of words here. I won't go through them in detail. But a little bit about the background. It started off in 1992. Um, this Monsieur Steve Lalibe and his intrepid uh, descendants, and they would have the a, a landing reenactment on the beach and a march down the street and a, a fun day on the park. Uh, it's sort of, it's always been hard to organise and get volunteers. Our volunteer base is ageing and and uh, obviously the commitment around it. I went to the Christchurch Council um, in 2009 to 2014, they ran it. They sort of lost the audience a bit. Uh, with the with it being in uh, run from Christchurch, uh, and we did have some uh, other bits and pieces. Two thousand twenty-three, uh, we we come into a a new a new era again, where we had um, John and Leslie come in, and they uh, wrote John writes the play on the beach, and uh, and we stretched out and. Then this year we tried to make it a, a, a whole weekend event. So just working through the program, you know, we started off on the Friday night uh, with a pottery and uh, a night market. And so on a opening, we had the band rotunda there with John. John uh, made the roof for that. Uh, they're both good seamstresses, both there and John. And they we had the bars and, and, and the, 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 the night market running on the Friday. Uh, the play on the beach, we engage with the Runa um, and we obviously try very hard to work with all the descendants to make it a full community focused and cover all the landings. Uh, the script is actually signed off or, or given to Anuku for sign off and we get a letter of support from Anuku. Uh, it is a satirical look at the landings of all the people 
and that come here, and it engages the children. Um, there's a great photo there, some of the kids that were in the play. Uh, following the, the landings, we, we have the march down the road, again, traditional with the descendants, uh, families, uh, and they uh, dress up in the march. They also have uh, some of the charts um, and uh, end up on the recreation ground where they uh, have a wonderful day with the markets. Going through that day, uh, we've got a lot of other activities going. We have um, we have the inside the main tent. We have uh, well, we have two main tents. One's the has the new new event called the um, Cafe Monet, where there's a French cafe and food and French fair. And inside the main tent, we have the heritage uh, displays. We have we support we support uh, all the um, things going on on Banks Peninsula. Um, the fashion parade, have the arts, have the bands playing outside during the day. And they have the big cabaret at night, 760 people sitting down at tables, uh, a huge event to put on. Again, uh, with, uh, we had some fantastic performers there and great times having we all. Uh, on the Sunday, we have, have had three changeovers. Three, set, the tent set up for the heritage, then it's set up for the cabaret with a three-hour turnaround. Then it goes into cleared again for the next day where we had the circus and uh, and the brocomp inside the main event. And kids games outside. Uh, heaps of things going on. And obviously the antique theatre, the brocomp on the inside. A dog show, a dog um, competition, dress up competition. And this is just a whole section of photos. The photos tell a thousand words. Great photos. And uh, you see the um, folk coming in. We had some professional actors to try and give stability around the play on the beach. Uh, a bunch of amateurs like me sort of fill in the gaps. Do you have a service module? <laughs> You're That's great. That's great. That's great. <laughs> okay. So, what do we offer the community? Who does the festival support? And this is really important. If communities engage in cooperation with Aruna, fully participating area, local schools, Acker and Bay Museums, they had displays there, Acker Fire Brigade, um, Acker and Bay Lions, they all involved, Acker River, Little River Circus School, Acker Little River Accommodation Providers, Bank Peninsula Rugby Club, Acker Community Arts Council, local artists and performers, Acker and Little River Farmers Markets, Acker Businesses. Not for profit groups, but just vote freely. We let all those people to come in. Nothing. And it is a free event, apart from the cabaret and a little bit of money on the circus. Banks um, Furniture, Fish Free Banks Furniture, Banks Furniture Conservation Trust, Banks Furniture Geopark Trust, French and Euro German and European Senate groups. We're all inclusive. No one is turned away. So, Where's the next page? Why is the last page not coming? No, uh, what no, do we answer for? What do we need for French Festival to be sustained as the next page? Yeah, and we haven't got it. Okay. Shall I just read? Do you want, would you just like to yeah, read Yeah, thanks that? very much. Okay, so what, what is this all about? Right. We get $40,000 from the, the, the festival group, and it's, thank you for the council for doing that. That hasn't changed in probably 10, 15 years. There, were, there was more money put aside for it um, earlier. The rest is uh, raised. It puts a lot of pressure on the um, people raising it. People like John, who have put in hundreds of hours, doesn't take any money for all of the art content. Leslie, we got about paid around $20,000 for actually four years you know, work. And there's a huge amount of volunteer hours. We really want it to, if we want to be have this event, which is a, a fairly unique community event, and enhance on it. I know it's not dead perfect. We want to get it right. We want everyone to be engaged and, and happy. That requiring conversations going forward to, to the people that the investors in. But we need more money. 
And I know it's a bad uh, thing to be asking for in this current environment, but for it to be sustainable, we would like, instead of having $40,000 a festival, we would like um, $180,000 a festival. It takes $260,000 to $240,000 approximately to run the festival, plus the landings, another $60,000. And they're separated. The landings is done by the um, Act, Act, the Arts Council, and they use that as a, and they sit it alone so they can get separate funding. And we, the French Festival Society can get funding separate. But it puts a hell of a lot of pressure on. It burns people out. And it's for a small group of, of permanent regulars. We did get volunteers coming over that had full time jobs in Christchurch. That was very, very hard on them. So we would like to think $90,000 a year for the next 10 years, inflation adjusted would be not too big a deal going forward. If we could have that, we believe we'd have then a, a, a sustainable, and we would like the support of the community board to uh, take that forward to the 10 year plan. <coughs> Any questions? Sorry. Surprise, surprise. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, an incredible event. I like it so much. And um, is there, I'm, I'm just sort of thinking, thinking kind of on the fly here, like in terms of like how to support that, because yeah, I mean, absolutely, mm -hmm. right funding, but it's not okay. guaranteed. No, there's already one person in that conversation. But um, all oh, your government funding is possibly here now. I'm just thinking, is there, is there, is there a way that, that council could provide? In kind support that wasn't necessarily monetary, but was like in yeah. terms of like logistical. Or, I'm just trying to think of like what that, are the, what I are the can, options. I can yeah. speak to that. I, I basically funded it, you know, applied for funding, and so I'm very familiar with all those streams. But um, yeah, that would be very very helpful. You know, in in uh, during that period where council did take over the management of it. Like, you know, I, I don't know what the exact number was, but it's hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, by the time you're adding in all of the staff, the support, things like art, you know, graphic print production, things like traffic management, things like safety officers, all sorts of stuff, all of those avenues that council do have in their, within their staff remit would be very helpful, you know, and, um, yeah, it's hard raising the money. And uh, John and I have actually been involved in it since 2017. Mm -hmm. And I've been involved in the funding of it for the last two festivals. And I'm sure like everybody else has noticed, it's really hard getting the funding. It was much harder last time than it was ever before. But we still managed to get about $150,000 worth of funding from various people. You know, local philanthropy, philanthropy came to the party, we sell tables at the cabaret. Um, you know, we do as well as we can, but boy, it's a struggle. And, and you know, you can't, at this stage, it's like, okay, we've reached a plateau <coughs> of fabulousness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, we obviously wish to continue that, but how, how we do that right now sitting here, I don't know, no. you know? It's like, we need more money that is in fact there at the beginning to hold us up. You know, and uh, and the, the money that Nigel mentioned, the two hundred, the um, two hundred and forty thousand, that was kind of ish what we spent at the last festival. Now, you know, maybe you had three, four people that were paid, like professional people, like a marketer, like uh, a production manager came in to handle it in the last thing. As Nigel said, I received a. a, a you know, an honorarium. There was, um, you know, a site manager, but. There were gaps, guys, and you know, going forward, we really need to fill those from the safety point of view, and also from the uh, professional delivery point of view, because we always want to be involved in that. No one wants to produce something that is less than up to par. Can, you I, know? can I just say too, a lot of that money goes back into the community. Pretty much all of Fire it. Brigade yeah. gets four thousand dollars. They do the security. Yeah. Rugby Club got thirteen hundred dollars for doing all the heavy lifting. Yeah. The wow. schools got money, you know, they, they came in and ran the bars and did, did some radar. Wow. They all got money. Yeah, he the fire yeah, yeah. A lot of the holes we have now, because it's, you know, we can put the thing on, 
Yeah. But health and safety away from that, and you know, we, we can only milk all of the community, you know, the Lions, the rugby clubs, the, the, the fire brigade who come and help us and support us. But um, I mean, waste management fell over this time. Well, we were sponsored by Fulton Hogan. Yes. It didn't really fall over. Probably it was not. just, you're talking Wasn't about enough. miscommunication there. That's just an example, really, of how, you know, the lacking of more production management and on the ground management, like all the time, instead of just some of the time, which was kind of like all we could afford, if you know what I mean. I don't just, wanna... just quickly, I just want to give a big heads up to you know some of that detail. Like John's been hours and hours and hours doing all the signs, all the pictures for the kids to put their heads through, all, all for nothing. Leslie dresses every one of those people on the beach, a hundred people dresses and makes the costumes. I guess it's a question, but maybe a suggestion to where this is like one of the big events of the that, that happens in the peninsula. And in the city, we have things like Christmas mm -hmm. carols or lights, the fireworks, and, and can it become one of that sort of mainstream event where we, you know, the funding kind of We'd like to set for it. Yeah, there is a lot of festival funding there that mm. we don't get a touch. That's you know, we don't get Christchurch NZ. They yeah. give us nothing. You know, we are out on a limb and we're yeah. asking, please, please. Just fell into that mainstream yeah. sort of thing that might secure something. I don't know. I'll speak further to what Nigel just mentioned about the Christchurch NZ. Like we have tried to get funding out of them before, but failed really because we do not fall into the large event category, mm. which is like the black caps. And, and those yeah, huge that's... giant events that you know you see on various things but yeah that that'd be great potentially does that take us back where we were in 2009 to 2013 because a lot of the feedback that that, that we receive is you know Akaroa loves owning this festival they love it you know there's a great deal of community pride people love showing it off and we get that feedback all the time and I, I would hate to see that happen Kathy I totally applaud your idea it's like if we could get some of the money but um maintain support maybe as you say goods in kind or um yeah but I think it needs to remain with the community okay Thanks. so the from Tyrone oh well, yeah through you know it was kind of along the same lines as what Kathy was saying really which is that I mean, it is actually a big enough conversation. I don't know how we mm -hmm. would have to talk to you, Ken, really, about how to... But, I mean, it's such an important... I think it's actually like a, a, a landmark event in the Christchurch events calendar that we just have to actually like. So, well, Thank it's you. Just, it's just yeah. Yeah. The, We've certainly built it to be yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we'll investigate how we can support this yeah. once again from the community board point of view. Uh, because we're all in agreement, it's something that we want to to see grow and to do well. Because it makes everything else do well. Mm -hmm. it, it does, yeah, it does, and um, yeah, people are right behind it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you, so thank you, 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 thank <laughs> Ruben Ru Ru <laughs> made the joke to me that this is the only award with a French festival and a spaceport in it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Quite you should get a little like a, a little or poster <laughs> or something. <laughs> okay, we have got um, welcome Janice to the table We're talking about conditions of beach road. Please tell us more. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm not, I haven't been on this side of the board table before, but there's always a first people thing. Um, over the years, I have been really, really frustrated with this piece of roading. It's a 30k zone from the Bruce Terrace Bridge around to the Glen Bay, and um, very, very narrow. And there's no two way traffic in most of the area, and in this particular narrow piece below the Garden of Tane, we have this grass verging on the seaward side. Um, last Friday, Felton Hogan came around and cleaned up all the winds and damage from the Garden of Tane, along the Garden of Tane, edging right along Beach Road. So I went to the contractors and said, oh, I like seeing you here. Can you sort this mess out on the other side of the road? And they said it wasn't their baby. And all the time I was on the community board, 
I was told exactly the same thing, that nobody knows who whose contract it is to look after this one wee strip of grass verge. And you can see on the um, white fencing there, there's been a, a bit of a slip into the sea years and years and years ago, so they put this white fencing around it. If a car pulls over now to allow another car to come through, they won't even see that white fencing. They'll probably end up wearing it. Um, and over the years, I have snapped sense of I don't know how many times, and I have given up. I have stopped doing it because they come along, they cut the top off, and we still can't use that little strip of road. We now have a new bike outlet in town, and the first place they bike is around that end, around on the beach road. Mm. I've been told by roading for years that we need to share the road. We have walkers, we have dog walkers, we have bikes, we have cars that that just tour around that way because, because A, the lighthouse is that way too. Mm. Um, and then we have the residents that live in that area with their boats, et cetera, et cetera. So, and they've got to come through here to go down to get their fuel and go back around wherever they're launching boats and things. Um, sharing the road has become a nightmare and it is such a simple solution for this little piece here. And all I have to do is take the grass off and blackjack it. Now, the blackjack other areas on that same piece of road, and yet they haven't done this little, little strip. But that little strip would cause a better walkway for most people. And in one of those photos, this one, you can see people walking around the road. Now, they all prefer to walk in the middle of the road. And then when a car comes, they split and go both sides. <laughs> so could we please have the council seriously, or the roading of the council, seriously look at getting that grass off and putting a blackjack surface on. Very simple. What, what genus? A blackjack surface. Just so we can walk on it. We can't walk on the grass when it's up to your waist every time. They come around just pre-Christmas and they mow it. And that's because we have more people in the town. But what about the permanent residents in the town that live here 12 months of the year and use that road? So I rest my case. Could you, is there any way that we could get those too many numbers from when you've done snapping and I wiped the app off my phone oh, because I got I'm so afraid. frustrated with yeah. snapping and solving. They would probably still be under the name, I imagine. And I probably could have them in my historic record somewhere. I could have a look, but yeah. Um, how is it? I actually know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Our roads are exactly the same. Yeah. Trying to walk up them with cars coming everywhere and everyone jumps both ways. But yeah, <laughs> what the answer is, I honestly don't know whether they'll do anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we've tried the same thing over at the other base. So, and I'm following up on that one too. I was at the Acro Forum meeting last Tuesday, mm -hmm. and the same issue came up, didn't it, Nigel? Yeah. Um, winery, devotional, yeah. outer base. They're all quite frustrated. A lot of them will mow their own frontages and things, yeah. but. There are other areas that just need a wee bit more TLC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense. Yeah. Where these streams, where there's houses, people take some mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But where the stream comes close to the footpath, mm -hmm. there's all the trees and bushes and grass and it all just goes, and you've almost got to step out on the road because you can't use the footpath anymore. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Footpath. exactly. And nobody's taking the fossils and no. maintaining it. Yeah. Um, so yes, it's just a matter of this is really good for you to come here today so that the elected and city areas can take really good notes. And when this comes up again, if we have a meeting or a briefing with the roading staff, we can bring these things up. And it, over time, these things accumulate and it's like frustrating it can't be done immediately. And there may be something more immediately that we can do. We'll investigate that. But it is definitely something that if you come along to things like this, keep it in the public eye and also the you know, elected members are now well aware of the situation. I'm, smir I'm smirking because I did that for years while I was on the community board and look, look at what's happened. I couldn't get there. Good luck to you guys. How many years have been working on this particular spot? How many years? Because that's good to note to actually say, well, this has been something that's been issued for blah, 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 years. How many years? How many years? Well, I've been involved with the Lighthouse um, I'm a volunteer for the lighthouse around there. Yeah. And that's over 12 years. And every, over time, 12 years. every time I walk around there, I was born here. And, and every time I walk around that road, I still remember it as being in that disgusting state. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Let's just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, because I'm not having any. Okay. It's a road yeah. reserve, right? Like, isn't it? it is a road reserve, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, well, we do. Thank you very much. We do need to move on a bit behind. So, yeah. thank you very much for that. Thank you. And we're just going to have a quick hello to um, Vanessa, our local MP. Hi. Come on up and quickly introduce you. We'd love to meet you. Hello, lovely to meet everybody. Um, I've met some of the community board, but not everyone, so I'm Tyrone. Um, around yeah. the table after you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just sworn in last week um, after all of that. Yeah, well, yeah. so it's, it's great. Um, and so my, um, my background is that I'm a GP and I was also an army officer for over 20 years. Um, but um, <coughs> I absolutely love Banks Peninsula and so many great things about um, this area and I just want to be one of those MPs that's really approachable and um, is um, listening to what's going on in the community and that's why I'm here basically to hear what's going on um, and just um, encourage you to get in touch with me if there's anything that I can help and support um, you all with I'd be very happy to do that um, yeah Right. Thanks very much. Shall we start from us up here and we'll move the table so you know where we're Yeah, um, my name is Arthur Hussain. Yeah, yeah, nice I'm to see you. Yeah, we've met before. before. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I'm a representative of Agua Subdivision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's got a bit of sin, you know me. Um, but I just want to say congratulations and, and um, I applaud you on your level of engagement mm -hmm. um, and your role. It's been noted and, oh, and very well received. Good, thank you. Yeah, and Vanessa, you know me. Yeah. Um, yeah, and congratulations um, on the deputy chair and obviously you an elected the member for Acro in the Bay. Yeah. I'd like to see you more involved. I'm sure we'd love to have a conversation with you about a lot of things. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm Lynn and I represent the Wadiwa Board. Yeah. Um, Wadi Board. Yeah. Um, and do you have a business card with you today? I don't have oh. them printed yet because um, oh. my office hasn't, I still haven't got, the landlord's been painful and I haven't exactly got the address 100% okay. nailed down. But yeah, I don't, Maybe unfortunately. Contact yeah, I'll give you my contact details okay. to Great. now. Yeah. 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 Happy as we yeah. met earlier. Yeah. Just yeah. briefly. Yeah. Uh, I'm Kathy Luan Sundar I'm with Luana. I am uh, the community board member for Mount Herbert. I live in Lapaki. I'm a student. Great, lovely to meet you too. Yeah. Kia ora, Kathy Lamweb, Littleton Subdivision. So it runs from Caspe into Littleton. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, Helen Eamon. I'm Mount Herbert. Great. Don't know about you. Yeah. Great to meet you all. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. No, I won't stay the whole thing, but you know, I'll yeah. speak at some point. But it's yeah. Thank you. So, five, six, seven, we do not. Oh, no, five six, we don't have any presentations of appointments or presentations of positions, but we do have a reserve committee meeting in minutes. Natasha. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Lovely. So we have four sets of minutes um, to be received today. And two points of note is that within the Cass Bay um, minutes, they are planning to plant some fire retardant natives along their boundary, um, which is really good news for ahead of the summer season. Um, and in the devotional minutes, they are planning to do a beach cleanup before Christmas, which is just yeah. so timely for the summer season. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Thank you. Thanks for putting all those together as well. Um, can I have any um, questions from Natasha about those? Can I have a mover to move that the minutes have been received? I do. And I set the second in there. All those in favour? Uh, yeah. And that's been carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very comprehensive. And next we've got Suki. Oh. Natasha. Oh, with Natasha. And uh, talking to us today about the kind of tiny. Oh, thank you very much for your patience, by the way. I know we're running a little bit late. So thank you, Suki. It's 
Lovely. So um, I'm joined here by Suki, who is the chair of the Garden of Tane Reserve Committee. Um, and we are here to present the first triennial plan of the term. Um, this is an absolute exemplar of what a triennial plan should be. Suki has worked collaboratively with staff to create this, um, which is in the attachment. Um, would you like to say a little bit about creation? Uh, well, I, I, I suppose you can send the spreadsheet because we did the triennial plan um, yeah, yeah. verbally yeah. last yeah. time. Yeah. So in terms of where we got to with this, um, doing this spreadsheet, um, that's kind of been a multi-stage process. So um, the first thing was that City Care, a very excellent person called Alyssa, came from City Care and we GPS the entire garden of Tane. And what I was really pleased about was that we did it together. So every single track, I said, start the GPS here, stop the GPS here. So they are exactly the tracks that, um, as the Garden of Tane sees them, every little bit. And they then put the names in that we've been using from the Garden of Tane. So now we have a definitive map of the Garden of Tane with the names that we use. And from that, we, um, they were able to generate the track lengths of every single track. So then the next step was to go around the Garden of Tane with um, Kiri Bowen from Community Parks and Mario and walk every track and then grade it on a series of characteristics, which were um, leaf blowing, uh, trimming vegetation, weed removal, um, and grade it as a low, medium or high um, in terms of the amount of work required so that we could then assign <clears throat> how long we thought a low, medium and high track would take to maintain and multiply it by the length of the track. So that's the kind of methodology that we've used. Plus we've counted and located all the culverts and worked how much time they would take to clear. Um, so one of the things that's emerged from all this is that Kerry Bowen's team, the community parks team, haven't had any kind of time sheeting system where they keep track of how much time they spend on individual you know, activities or parks. But I do think they now have got been issued with these iPads that they can start to track it. Um, and I'm hoping they'll track against the categories that we've actually measured against. Um, so we, we're flying blind here. So what we've done are completely, you know, best effort estimates where we've tried to use a methodology that was consistent, but then we sort of back checked it to sort of sanity check, do we feel comfortable with it? So having got those things on a track by track basis, we then added into the spreadsheet that Natasha had sent the amount of time expected for mowing um, of some of the grassy areas, um, and then the real biggie, storm damage, mm -hmm. which is, is an unknown. And um, what we generate, and then we took out of the spreadsheet things that we felt were actually capital renewal works. So things like track resurfacing, replacing bridges, that type of thing are not accounted for. Anyway, where we landed was 271 hours of staff time um, per year to do those maintenance activities in the Garden of Tane, which assumes that each one of, uh, well, mowing's done several times, but things like weeding along the tracks and um, trimming the tracks twice per year um, to do those. So we came up with 271 hours of staff time, which carries multiplied up by the um, staff charge out rate to get the financial cost. Um, we've then also um, worked out how much volunteer time um, and we've come out at 308 hours for that. That's our time doing meetings. A lot of time doing, I mean, I spend, as Ron was commenting on earlier, I should have introduced Ron, by the way, from um, our committee, Ron Birch, a retired accountant in Upra. Um, yeah, huge amount of time on this kind of management stuff. Um, and then we're planning to do, as part of our plan, um, as you're aware, are replanting of certain areas of the garden. So that's where we really see our volunteer time going into um, and relying on the park staff to do the maintenance. So as well as that, the other side that is now coming on well too is the city care work to do the GPSing. So as well as having done the tracks, they've now been round again and captured all the assets. And I've just sent the spreadsheet um, and the link to their online map a week ago, which has got, you know, every bench and seat and bridge and all the rest of it now located on that map. 
but I've now got to go through each one of those and work out what date it was that that bridge was installed or that seat was installed. So that then it should drive that capital renewal process um, when they come up for um, replacement. Um, so I think we're getting there in terms of capturing the data and having an actual, um, having the Garden of Tane managed by the staff and by um, the Reserve Committee. And I really want to thank Kerry um, and Natasha for, for working with us and the people from City Care who just were fantastic. So it feels like we're really getting somewhere. And then the other interesting thing that happened was the mystery cypress spelling because a, a large thuja cherry was felled. I'm just on the edge of the Garden of Tane and a big mess was left of um, branches that weren't properly cleared away and huge rounds like this. And we didn't know who'd done it and Kerry couldn't find out who'd done it. And finally I contacted Orion as there's some power lines nearby and the guy from Orion got the bit between his teeth and did some sleuthing and came back and told us it had been done by tree tech because that tree was on road reserve and had been deemed to be um, dangerous. I think it had a big split in it. And so Tree Tech have got in touch, apologised for not clearing up properly and are coming back and giving us three days of work uh, later this month. So we have to figure out what we want them to do. But first, they've got to clean that mess up. So, yeah, it's, um, it was, it's been an interesting right. exercise, but it just... Um, one of the continuing, I think, and ongoing issues that we have is that interface between roading and parks where, I mean, like um, you were saying, um, Janice, there was stuff off the Garden of Tane that was on the road. No, that's off the road reserve that's on the road. Um, and so, you know, we need to get that. And we have that in our three-year plan. That's one of our goals is to improve that interface between roading and parks, but this just serves to sort of yeah. highlight it again that um, roading would have the temerity to come and chuck, cut down an enormous tree mm -hmm. and then just leave it as a mess in the Garden of Tane. Um, so anyway, I think we're making really good progress and I hope we provided you with the information that you wanted. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? All right. I do. Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> I do love a good culvert. Um, <laughs> and so this is a culvert I think there are enough culverts around the peninsula for them all to have been named after all of us, really. Um, so how many culverts are we talking here? Um, yeah, well, I have to have a look. Um, there's, because uh, I haven't got my spreadsheet that's got the more detail on, but there's not that many. There's a handful of culverts. There's about five or six. It's the one coming from Onukur or Dan below. Or is that what... I'm well, we're not talking about, about ones that are on the roads. Those are on our thing. Off the road, we're talking about ones in that the are garden. in the garden on the tracks. So okay. there's probably three, four, about six or so. Right. We reckon they take about 10 minutes each to clear. I mean, if you clear them, they don't take very long, you know. 10 minutes is plenty. Under the bridge, whip a few leaves yeah. out and off. So can I just clarify? So they're, they're kind of in the three you can in the RC's purview, but it's kind of the responsibility of the parks team to clear them. Yeah. Normal, normally. And and the rate at which they're being cleared hasn't historically been enough. So you've worked out what rate they kind of need to be. Is that is, am I right? Well we've just said clear them twice a year at the moment. Oh, I see. We're right. aiming on a twice a year, you know, that parks team will get around the Garden of Tane twice a year. Right. You know, spring and autumn basically. Okay. Um and then that one of the volunteer jobs, um, providing we can, you know, get someone, hopefully Jeremy, Ron, who are living in Akaroa and um, popping in um when a storm is threatened, because that's when it's really key mm -hmm. that you go and check. Um, and just clear Very anything cool. out. And that's where, you know, we can't really expect parks the day before a storm is due to get round every mm. culvert everywhere. So that's where we see local volunteers being able to add maybe very some value. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the work that you've done. This yeah. is really yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah we'll get, I think getting some systems in place is, is really important, but each reserve is going to be slightly different in terms of what its requirements are. <clears throat> Right, well, let's, let's get on and support you with this, shall we? Yeah, yeah. thank um, you. So I'd like a mover for, to accept the support they're going to 
Yeah. Okay. Yes, Nigel, okay. and who would like to second that? Um, yeah. 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 Great. Thank you. All those in favour? Yes. And that is Carrie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for having yeah. us. Oh, no, it's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Number nine, the virtual holiday park. Um, presenter is Colin Jacker. Hi there. Sure to go to. Mm -hmm. um, so, Colin Jacker, I'm in the Rec Sport and Events team at Christchurch City Council. Um, I look after or work really closely with uh, three observe uh, committees uh, Canes Bay, Pigeon Bay, and Devotionals Holiday Parks. Um, so the, the team at the Devotionals Reserve Committee sent their apologies. They really wanted to come and talk to this, but unfortunately we weren't able to make it along today. Um, it's a pretty, pretty simple one which the staff in the Rick and Sport Department are supporting. So the delegation for the location of any additional buildings on a reserve falls through to you guys. Um, it makes a lot of sense what's being proposed, putting some additional cabins in. Um, under the, the clauses here with uh, additional consultation, resource consent, building consent, and obviously doing it within the means. It's all fully self-funded. Uh, so they're able to pay for the, these works themselves. Once we get through the summer, there should be adequate funds to do at the very least one, possibly both cabins that they're looking to do. Oh, yeah, so yeah. put it out to you guys to see if you've got any questions on it. Can I speak to this? No, no. Yeah. All right, look, I'm all over this. I think, um, you know, as the liaison for the locals, Zoo, um, I understand what they're doing. And I think the way they've built up and you, you're obviously building these cabins, you've got these cabins, I think it's a no-brainer that self-funding and it creates more accommodation. Okay, Tyrone? Uh, thank you. Um, so why just two? Like, I mean, that's all I mean. Like, what if, what, if, what if something comes up and goes, oh, you want to build two more and it's really successful? Do we need another report to the board to do that? So, so yeah, if um, at the stage they've got enough funds to pay for two of them, Mm -hmm. um, and it makes sense with the, it's complementary to all the other cabins that are already there. Um, and it's not too hard if in the future these go swimmingly well and additional civil sites are available. I would imagine the Reserve Committee would again say, hey, actually, what about another one or two? Um, but it, again, it has to be weighed up with the, the whole campsite and what's going on there. So that would require a whole other board report, a report to the it, board? It would, but we've, we've written one, so it's probably not too yeah. hard. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> and I take it, it's probably the you know, a few years before okay. they can have enough funds yeah. to do this. The, the Reserve Committee's been wanting this for about the last 20 years. It's been an ambition, so it's great to finally be able to support it and say, yes, we've got enough funds to get this across the line now. I, I, I think it's a, a really successful zoo. It's a great camping ground. It's got people who come every year. It generates its own money. It pays for itself. It's a self-funding exercise, and I think more, more than it can be supported to be. Yeah. Great. Anything more to be said? Really? Yeah. Okay, so we'll take it to the table um, that we approve the request for the Devotional Reserve Committee is the provision of specific sites, so there's two there, of self-contained cabins at the Devotional Quality Park. Now, there's a few things that's subject to, there's a few conditions there, um, A, D, I'm not going to go through them, A, D, C, D, E, um, I'd like someone to move that, please. Nigel, a seconder, yep. all those in favour, no. against, and that's carried. Thank you very much. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Exciting time when you're there. Natasha's at the table again. <laughs> <laughs> With the Community Water Plan Monitoring Report. <laughs> <laughs> um, this report is just presenting back to you the progress that has been made towards the community board plan. Um, attachment A is outlining the actions that have been made and attachment B is stating the champions. Uh, 
um, of each priority. Yeah. Um, we're also going to take some time to run through the new community board plan progress page, um, which has been recently created. Um, I designed this in collaboration with the channels team. Um, because at the end of the day, the community board plan is for the community. And so I think it's really important that they can have 24 seven access to the actions that are coming out of the plan in a way that's really engaging um, and interactive and accessible. So you can access the page um, just from the typical Banks Peninsula webpage um, on the big red progress on our plans. And it breaks up into the priorities um, with an explanation at the top. Um, if we go into the proactive planning for climate, or the good social and school community connections, this is priority E. Um, and going into the second one down, which is support community organizations, um, this is E21. Each action has been broken down um, into what it is and when it occurred. Um, it's really user-friendly um, and it's really accessible as well because we've got that reader-writer feature um, that we have on all council pages. Um, this way the community can see the actions that are happening from our board plan all the time, not just when the report is coming to the board um, and it's easily accessible all the time. Oh, I know, pretty cool. Isn't it? So, 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 and the work behind. Sorry, I can't hear you. No, I was just saying, so, so good. And the work behind goes for And is this the first for the. Yes. The, we are the first council, board. Council. Council. First in council. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, so, that's fantastic. Is, it, is that because you guys are so awesome and you decided, yeah, let's go for it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's because Natasha wanted a way for the board members and the community to be able to see the progress over the time and be engaged with it rather than just have a big word document mm -hmm. where you plough through it. You can choose a priority that you really connect with and you want yeah. to have a look at and drill down on that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's because of Natasha you have this. Awesome. I see it really helpful when somebody comes to me yeah. and says, oh, we've, we've been working on this and what's the latest update? And I'll just like, well, next time you're curious, go here and go with them and show them how to use it. And it's just like cake. Mm. So thank you so much for all that hard work. It really is super. Yeah, hope everybody uses that heat. Um, uh, especially for the elected members, it kind of has to come from the top of it too. I think we use it and we use it in our communication and that will trickle down. Um, and put in a little link in our emails when people are inquiring. Use the link, and if you've got Facebook, use that as well. Do a link on your Facebook pages. Um, super, it's going to use lots. Okay, so make that motion. Receive the. Uh... Oh, yes, yes, right. Yeah, I got so excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got it. Yes, who, who's ready? Yeah. Is he going to have a question as well okay. at the same time? Yeah. Um, just uh, priority C, I'm looking at protection and enhanced biodiversity. We haven't made any progress in that. Is Could we put that presentation which was given this morning? Yes. Yeah. You know, in line with that, so that could be one of our measures. Yeah. And we could <laughs> Um, That's exactly yeah. what we do after each meeting. Mm -hmm. We go through mm -hmm. the priorities and yeah. assign actions and discussions or briefing topics that you've had. So you're becoming more informed about one of your yeah. topics. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really good. Like I went through last night and with the what names, priorities that I decided and thought, right, is any gaps there? What can mm -hmm. I do? What, who's doing something in the community that we can get on board with? It's just keeping yeah. an eye on those gaps and figuring out how we can work with the community on those too so that we can move them forward, yeah. really. Yeah. And um, priority E, I think there was a section I can't see here. Or is it not a list? The social yes. connection. Priority E is not here, I can't see. No priority E at all, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh. So, just okay. okay. 
I think it, maybe it is just connections to yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I remember the all those in favor? Against. So you have now moved it. Yeah. No, it was moved. No. Oh, moved it was Tyrone. Right. Second, it was Asa. Thank you. Yeah. We've got Peter McConnell online coming to talk to us today about a bit of tree removal on temporary Rudra location. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. You have the floor. Right. Um, well, I'm, I'm standing in for uh, Mary Holland, who's unavailable today but she's briefed me on the project and um, I know that the site I've been up there before so apparently um, uh, this item uh, went to the community board some time ago for tree removal uh, to install this temporary reservoir but um, after that the contractor had another look at the site and their methodology for installing this tank and um, came to the conclusion that they would need more trees removed in order for the um, large crane that they were going to take up there to um, operate effectively. So when um, Mari made the original application, um, she didn't really think of uh, the craning methodology and the amount of room uh, that the crane would need to swing uh, this tank into place. So hence she got tree tech back and uh, with the contractors and they identified additional trees. Um, not all, they've been quite conservative. They probably won't need to take out all the additional trees they've sought, but um, they're just being conservative in the application. Nigel. Yeah, I'm Nigel Harris in the Ankara. The trees, they, 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 they between the French Cemetery Memorial and the um, the water reserve, um, are they? They are all pine trees, aren't they? Or is it? Are they? How many natives are involved in this removal? And yeah, are there are. Yeah, that's right. Um, there are some natives up there. There's a mix of species in that area and um, they're all identified in the tree report. I don't have the tree report in front of me at the moment but um, I have reviewed it. It's on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. 53, 54, 55. Page 55 yeah. identifies the trees. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, no. Peter, we're just having a wee look at the map here. We're just conferring amongst ourselves for a moment. Yeah. Smile starting on the native. Right, yeah. Keep going, page 53. This is the map. 55 is the table. Evening, just not seeing any more trucks. Thanks, Tim. Right? Replace by Dr. Carver. Why, too? Pittsburgh, no, generic, really. So quite damaged. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it does say very cool. Okay. What does that mean? Yeah, Macro Carver, yeah. I can't see what you put in. So it looks like a lot of those trees are not, are not in good condition. Yeah. yeah. Is that right, Peter? Thank you, Pat. It looks like a lot of those trees are not very good condition. Yes, that's right. Um, I've been, I've walked through that piece. And, um, yeah, some of them are quite rough. And, of course, the other thing is, um, once these works are done, uh, we'll probably, you know, replant with appropriate uh, species where we can. Yeah, that's good. Great. That's good to know. Yeah. All right. Any more questions for Peter? No. Okay. So um, I'm just going to call for someone to move for the approval of the removal. Of the 17 additional trees, and that's Nigel. And seconder, Arthur, all those in favour? Aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. And that has been carried.
Thank you very much for your time, Peter. Appreciate it. Right. Thank you. I'll pass that on to Mary. Thank you. All the best. Cheers. Well, so one, one last thing before you go. Yeah. What's going to happen to that firewood? Can it be donated to through to the Lions or something? Uh, we can probably arrange that. I'll discuss that with Mary when she gets to work tomorrow. Thank you. Right here. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. okay. 2023-2024 discretionary response fund application project Littleton Emergency Hub setup costs with Andrea online. Is that right, Andrea? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Okay, so you have in front of you a application for funding from Project Littleton for the um, emergency hub that they are setting up in Littleton and some of the associated costs um, towards training of volunteers and some basic first aid equipment. So are there any questions? Any questions, members? Okay, so we'll go to um, Thanks, Andrea. The, uh, I'm getting the sense that a lot of the different communities, like there's been a flurry of civil defence activity from different communities around the peninsula. Like Cass Bay are doing a thing. I know. Uh, no problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's doing it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. Which is great because that's what we want. And um, I'm just, so. This amount of money, like, I'm just wondering if, if it's worth us having a conversation as a board thinking about provisioning for these kinds of things in general. Like, is it, do you think that's kind of, what, what are your thoughts on that? Because I can see that this, come, this coming up, like, multiple times over the next year or so. So are you saying instead of independently look at yeah. them, maybe having, like, a... Block fund, yeah, a block fund. Yeah, a block fund. Sort of block fund. Sitting there, how did you do that? Oh, oh, it's um, money. Yeah, it's, um, so there, there's a government priority to have um, resilience. Um, so there's funding set aside for resilience and mm -hmm. um, building resilience within communities. It's worthwhile mm -hmm. thinking about having a coordinated approach to government about that. Um, okay. It will be looked upon very favourably, I think. Can't guarantee anything, obviously, um, but also there's going to be a um, provincial um, infrastructure fund, so a couple of different ways of approaching it potentially. So it might not just have to be all the um, council. That's great. You want a few minutes to see how. What I will say. Yes, Andrea. Um, what I will say in response to Tyrone's um, question yeah. is. Um, the it's what's excellent is that the various different communities are all linking in together um and there won't necessarily be these emergency hubs set up in every single location um some of the smaller communities um will link in to these bigger hubs so um littleton and diamond harbour will definitely have them possibly governor's bay places like cas bay are looking at smaller interim things in case they get cut off but they're also linking in with littleton and governor's bay and diamond harbour so that there are options of places to go rapaki marai are working closely with with this group as well um so there's lots of coordination going on between the groups trying to work out how to do this um so how you decide to fund it is is up to you. Um, I'm just presenting this because this group are actually at the stage where they are ready. They've already undertaken three sets of training for their volunteers. Um, they have their venue sorted and they're ready to go. So, yeah. That's great, yes. And I feel like that, that we need to support them with where they're at. And, yeah. and I think it's a great question that Tyrone brought up for definitely for the future and looking at other avenues for funding for these groups because they will be working closely together. Um, yes, being so close together and geography-wise. So... Um, and and, and we'll be needing more of those because... A lot of communities, they live in the outer base, especially they can't access the resources in the next day even, yes. in case of emergencies. So There'll be double ups because of that. Yes. yes. Many people will be like uh, susceptible to being cut off. Yeah. 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 yeah, so that is going to be challenging. But in this instance, I think if they have already done that work, 
Mm. We wouldn't be harmed. You know, that could be a good example for as a learning curve for all of us, yeah, whether right. to, to do, you know, which approach you follow. Okay. And um, don't care about the sun. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to move it? Yes. Thank you. Any seconds? No, Nigel? Can you move it? Nigel? 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 No, no, it was James. Oh, you're James. Okay. James. Sorry, I'm doing James. Oh, I saw the two, like the head, the start of it was very similar. Okay, so this is yeah. point 13. Uh, discretionary response time application, Little River Farmers Market and Public Liability Insurance. Yep, and a mic speaker. Yeah, speaker. Yep, yes. So um, they need their liability insurance for the market for the season, um, which they can't afford um, entirely themselves. And they, they like the mic speaker thing because they support local musicians um, mm -hmm. and have them on site and run events. So um, it would be really helpful to have that. Um, they didn't get a strengthening communities fund application in for it this year, which is why they've come to DRF. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I have one question. So the mic and the speaker, do they have two prices for that or? It's a portable thing. I know the sort of thing it is. Uh, well, they would have had to, you know, they would have had to have quotes in order to get um, to make to get it this far through the system. They would have had to have some quotes for that. The public liability insurance, and I was thinking we paid that last year. Yeah. Was that just to see? Did we talk about that as being a once type thing? Do, does anybody else remember? How that works, or how it may work for other groups, or what we do there. How we feel about that. How do we feel about yearly paying? Um, yeah, these groups, if they are organising, and even they have to have uh, uh, the insurance, um, uh, <coughs> likes of Ecra, ADP has uh, started that. Um, that that cost for quite some time. Uh, but yeah, this is must. Yeah. Have it, yeah. yeah. So, are you saying that this would be the last year you've got to do that? Yeah. That's a question I'm putting out to the. To the yeah, should we be funding these, all of this stuff? Who pays the public liability insurance for the Lawton Farmers Market? Oh, uh, the I think that you find that the income is quite a lot bigger mm. than the Little mm. River one. Are they after our one? How? Probably so. I was just asking council. Don't they have a umbrella cover for all these groups or something for? No. No, wouldn't it be a good idea to? In a weird note. Yeah, it'd be a bit like cheaper than an individual outfits paying eight hundred dollars every year. If you got every group in the. Oh, you're saying the they French fish pay? Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, the accounts will cover the whole lot, and it'll be a lot cheaper than eight hundred dollars every group in the um the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, an umbrella, an umbrella. Even if they got to pay ten thousand, it's still cheaper than um eight hundred dollars for all the. Have we done that in the past? And is it a precedent that we have to keep paying, or is well, it free, something free, new? Free don't get paid. They don't get paid. So, and that's all the question. So, the market down here, we do. They would have had to have liability. I think the main difference would be that Little River is it's only their second year of operation, yes, so they're still right. becoming established, mm -hmm. whereas the others have been, you know, they have a regular clientele and a, a regular um, storeholders, I guess, more, perhaps more than the Little River one. Mm -hmm. um, yes, um, in terms of the, the other funding they're asking for for the speaker, and that's not uncommon because Diamond Harbour asked yeah. for a similar yeah. thing to yeah. 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 And I'm all about supporting the, I'm just wondering yeah. about how, how that works. Is there something that we could put in here to say, um, happy to do this with this? Yeah. Is this the kind of seed funding for them? If we felt that way, or do we, are we able to continue this? Yeah, I think it's a, if it is in a organization that is being established or even is being established so you know we should support support the establishing yeah. themselves yeah I think so too. because it makes sense because it's a community event and to, uh, fits under both but, plan community yeah. building community resilience and sure but you'd like to see them 
being able to cover some of that cost for just, themselves. Just so they know that it's, I mean, yeah. if they can, it should yeah. be something that they should take into account to become yeah. more self sustainable because yeah. at some point in the future, that might not be the have a line on it, it can fall down as well. So yeah, I'm thinking of them and the year sustainability as well as precedence as well. Okay. Yes. So it's an incorporated society. So who are the governors of it? Are they is it locally governed? Yes. And it's uh, yes, the it is. The yep. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. That's a great yeah. big thing. That's well, a good market. Good to Yeah, Christmas market. Well, it's very festive. Are you moving it, Nigel? Okay. Five seconds. Thank you, Nigel, please. Yep. Asa, all those in favour? Aye. Right. Against? And that's carried. Thanks. It's Christmas after all. It's Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Come on up. Talk to us about it. Better off on the applications that we need to consider. Right. Oh, very festive mood now. Oh, wow. yep. so. <laughs> okay, so this is your second decision meeting for the Better Off Fund. We have $246,000 remaining in the fund. Um, and the project before you today is the Akaroa area school and community pool heat pump and solar panel project the full the full cost of the project is a little a little over one hundred and thirty thousand, and the current staff recommendation is for a ten thousand dollar contribution toward the solar panels which will offset um assist in offsetting the future electricity costs right to get with you lynn any questions about that and my, my understanding is that it's $270 for a seasonal key uh, if you are not a someone who works for the school. Yep. They get free keys? No, 110. 110, I've been told. 110 or 45. Yeah, something like yeah, that. I know, I know that this for the kids and the families of. Yeah. And I and I believe I believe there's some free keys given out too. But, and some available for... Um, People that aren't well off. $110 is a good rate for locals. I think it's a shame that that can't be extended to maybe people that are ex students or people that live here permanently, just to broaden that. It is. Up to um, yeah, it is. Um, they have got separate categories. You listed it, it was in your report somewhere. Um, I, I didn't know. Um, it yeah. Yeah. Have a look at that, and we'll just let Nigel finish what he had to say. You guys I, I, I just really would like to see that, um, you know, if you, if you lived here permanently and or an ex, uh, ex student, um, which I am, that you can get a tick, uh, get a key for $110. If that's the case, and that's fine, but it's, yeah. it's just the accessibility has been discussed uh, in the community. Good facility. I think we should support it. Yeah, it's on. So you think that it should be more affordable to more people? Oh, for you, yeah. But we're not discussing it. We're discussing them giving them ten thousand dollars, aren't That's we? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not. So we really need to get back to what we're discussing. Sorry. <laughs> that, that point you raised, Nigel, is on seventy-two. That information is there. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Seventy-two. Um, I brought that to this, um, uh, this uh, you know, we discussed that earlier. This is the only school pool that community access. And it's too given, cold. yeah, it is too <laughs> cold, uh, not good for uh, ideal for children. And we are not allowed to swim in the harbor because the water is contaminated. And the ask they have, I think, got an estimate for for the solar panels is sixty five thousand and ten thousand dollar. I think it is. It wouldn't do anything. You know, it wouldn't contribute much. Yeah, it's really a small and given its impact and the importance for the and the base community. I think we could increase the 
amount if it's okay with other board members. So are you saying that the recommended amount here uh, yeah. is not considering the amount that is taken to, it's just a drop in the bucket? Yes. And you would like to support more? Okay. No. Just coming back to that, I'm looking at this um, prices here. We've got community family, $275. So a school family, by definition, is people at school. And your family. Kids, yeah. So uh, I could probably get in as, as a senior, but the community family, okay. It's not our place, like I said, you'd say, Howard, to do that, but I think accessibility is a, is a good thing. No, it, I'm saying that we're just not discussing that at this point of order. Well, and it's, it's not necessarily <laughs> it's not because we, it's in the report. Yeah, it's in the report, and we can discuss about what the needs are for this pool and okay, yeah. the money towards it. So it is open for discussion. Um, May I have to think, um, And we could take back to them at, at any point the suggestion to um, increase the subsidy access, which we have been exploring with them as well. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, I mean, just as, a, as, a, as an ex-school pupil, both primary and secondary, um, you know, I would like to think that I, if I was in that system, would be able to get a, a school family concession. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just broadens, it broadens it, broadens it. But anyway, I'm more, more than happy to see it increase slightly too. Oh, well, yep. Yep, yep, yep. I, I just wanted to just add a little bit to Steffi's um, conversation about why, um, why that amount was recommended. Mm -hmm. um, the school itself can completely fund um, the cost of all of this. They have reserve funding mm -hmm. from the sale of the junior school. Mm -hmm. So they have said if they don't get enough funding from all the places that they're seeking, that they will fund it. So it is going to be funded. Um, ahead, yeah. yeah, the second thing is that, and you're already aware of this, the Ministry um, of Education won't support, it won't fund any of the costs of the pool because... The school community, um, when they sold the junior school, they invested that and created the pool. It wasn't created directly from Ministry of Education funds, mm. even though it provides an amazing resource mm. and it's the only pool where they can learn to swim and et cetera, et cetera. The minister, um, MOE won't fund any of it. Mm. So that's up to the school and the community and they've done an amazing job monitoring all of that. Um, the, um, the main reason that we are that staff are um, two reasons. One is the access to the pool, but the other is the solar panels themselves will make mm. the whole deal so much more sustainable for the school mm. on an yeah. ongoing yeah. basis. Yeah. And that directly relates to your climate change, um, yeah. you know, <clears throat> you know, being sustainable, yeah. being more eco and giving the uh, giving you know more of the community access. Mm. So that's why it was a ten thousand dollar, which is a, a good chunk of money, a, you know, contribution um, yeah. of your it is from the better funding, funding is quite a big yes. Mm -hmm. So that was why that amount. I'm happy uh, to move. Just at this point, I, something I'd like to add to you too, and I don't know if it's been done before, but just is there a precedent to have partial funding to towards the pool and then partial funding to say this here can be used for families that may not be so well off? Has that ever been done before? So from the funding from us, can we put it with that little note on it? Do you know how that works? Uh, well, you you could, although um, technically speaking, the the sort of border conversations um, around those different cards and the cost and the access wasn't that, that wasn't a major focus of this assessment. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of background yeah, stuff. I think if you wanted to look at something like that, then DRE, you know, you could come back to DRE. Right. But there are. And, and I'm still exploring it, but there may be other council funds towards subsidising, um, reducing the barriers to swimming. Mm. So okay. still have we're still working on that. that but, okay, yeah. So um, that's, there is a, yeah. Sorry. That's the early yeah. stages. Yeah. Okay, great. Just as long as that's acknowledged, and we can move something yeah. else forward there. Tyrone. Um, I've got two questions now. Tyrone, I just to come <laughs> up with one. Just yeah. Did I mention at the last meeting that there's a there's a council yes. piece? And we're following yeah. that up. So that's yeah. open. We're still yeah. following that. That was a thing. It's interesting yeah. to know where that's gone. Um, my question is: um, so 
I understand that the pool needs to be refiberglassed at some point in the next 10 years. Um, correct. And it's going to cost yeah. 150K. I think that's the right yeah. figure. Yeah. Is that about right? Yeah. Um, and yeah. we've yeah. been told that because it's not a council asset, we can't we can't put it up as a as an item in the LTP. So, but hey, you can apply for a grant through the capital endowment fund. Anyway, the, the Ministry of Education relationship yeah. really affects that. Yeah, so I guess what's our next move? Right? I'm sort of just told point blank. Sorry, Tyrone, you can't put a lot, and like you can't put the funding in the LTP for the for the mm -hmm. fiber class replacement. What, what's our next? International fundraising. And can I just say that the school does have four investment properties as well. They they are they're, they're not a poor school, uh, but they're well well. Two minutes. Yeah. You know. Go find me page. I don't know. Look, it's at ten thousand. We haven't got a lot to play with that other that other um, exercise coming up to five dollars. That's going to be another question when it's it's raised, I guess. All right, Mayor, through you, Madam Chair, and Steffi, I haven't had any conversation with the trustees or the board or something. Uh, uh, we haven't discussed around how they would look at fundraising it, but they yeah are definitely aware that that's another big cost coming up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to move. Have we finished with the fresh questions around this this day? Um, are you okay, like asking support basically to increase the amount. You'd like Just, to move an amendment to yeah, the resolution. Amendment, yeah. What yeah. would you do for that? You can try doing that. So you can, yeah. Um. So what would your amendment be? Just open for discussion here with the other uh, board no, members. No, yeah, it's it's an, yeah. an amendment. Yeah. So you're in a formal okay. process now. Um, suggesting half of what they're asking for the pool, it's 65,000 is the cost of solar panels, so half of that. Which is how much? Which is half, so it would be 30 to 500. Right, so you treat that as a motion, as an okay. amendment, so you'd like to move that um, the board approves the grant of, what did you say, 32 and a half thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, or you'd like to change the amount from ten thousand to thirty-two and a half thousand dollars. So then, is there a seconder for that amendment? Yeah, is there a seconder for that movement of increasing it to thirty-two and a half thousand? From ten thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. No. I, so I, that I, I just don't think that would be a good process to follow. Well, we don't have that much money. We have got three hundred thousand for three years. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's move so back to the original one that we had. And so that there is for the approval of the grant $10,000. And do we have a motion for that? No. Okay, Tyro, second. Yeah. Uh, I'll the second in that. Below the Tyro, thank you for asking. And all those in favour? Right. Against? That's carried. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Like, we just be like, oh, yeah. Don't ask you, don't get that. Okay, we've got number 15 here, which is uh, talking about the recess committee over the holidays. Liz, who is sending for Liz? Well, Liz is, um, Liz is, oh, Liz is away today. That's why we have mm -hmm. Faye online. However, um, I can speak to this because um, we've been using the board set up a recess committee, but because it was set up as a committee and has the whole standing order thing going with it, it, um, it made it really clunky in terms of, and in fact, it, it um, disabled you from being able to respond to some submissions that you wanted to do in time because you had to have so much notice and everything that goes with it. So what we are suggesting is that you... Um, is that you, oh, sorry, this, this is the recess committee, the not the submission one, sorry. Mm -hmm. Let me get with the program. I'm surprised you let me talk so long <laughs> on the wrong topic. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> 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 this is recess committee, so um, in between Christmas and um, when you start up again, if stuff happens, you need to, a mechanism to be able to deal with it. Um, it's a standard thing you do every year. 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So that's your point there is this committee by comprising of a board chief person and a deputy chief person. It's all right, Sean, I think. No, Carry on. Yes, yes, yes. yes so that's kind of my last thing, you too. Yeah. And plus a minimum of two board members. Yeah. And these people have been given the delegated powers of the whole board for that period of time, probably just for emergencies and all those things between yeah. 11th of December and the 12th of February. Yeah, it will be reported to the board for board records. Anything that's been decided, and that note that any meeting convened in the recess committee will be publicly notified and details forwarded to the board members. Yeah, Tyrone, you have a question. So, the chair, I thought the recess committee was just the chair and the deputy chair. And the, this, the, so, this is like four, four people, so basically, mm. like, almost yeah. the board. <laughs> like, um, it's, a, it's a good question to ask, yes. Yep, no, that's correct. It is right. Okay, I can't even thank God I've been on this board for five years now. Chair or deputy so plus two others. Okay, so, so here I probably ask for volunteers. Am I, am I included in that two board members? Can be, I suppose. Yep, unless you have to give another one. I mean, I'm happy, happy to, I'm happy to, to see you around. Right. Yeah. Well, everybody would be asked, so, yeah. you know, like it's oh, not volunteer. How do we figure out the other two? Do we have a bridal power? To <laughs> well, no, it's <laughs> <laughs> it, says, it says a minimum of any other two board members. So we, we fire out to every single one of you. We need to, you need to make a decision around this. We have a chairperson and we need two others who's coming on board. And you might all go, we can come on board and we go, great, you can all be there. If you can all make it, that's it. If you can't, we need at least three of you. Um, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Heavy. Thank you. To do it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's two of us. Yeah. 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 We, the resolution, and then we'll grab you when we need you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So all of those in favour. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure. Can I have a second? Thank you, Nigel. And um, I'll move that. So that's a second. And all those in favour. All those against. And that's carried. Thank you. So it's interesting when we go through a new process. It's very confusing, but we got there. Thank you. We have the area report. Area report. Thank you. So, um, lots of cool stuff reported from staff about what's been going on. You're welcome to ask any questions around that. Um, I'd like to move on to paragraph 3.4.5 which is what I started prattling on about before, <laughs> which is the board submissions committee. So you, because you've all read that paragraph, because you've all read the report, right, you'll be aware that um, we are suggesting that you disestablish your submissions committee yep. and instead delegate authority to the chair and deputy in consultation with the rest of the board members to consider submission opportunities as they arise and decide whether to make them and then to work together to finalise and lodge the submission. So it becomes a much quicker, easier yep. process than having to do the standing orders things. Yep. The statutory notification, all of that, it just made it far too clunky. I'm not sure why we thought we needed to do that in the first place. However, we can be agile, can't we, and make some changes. So we have some... We have some suggested um, recommendations here. Um, so one is to dis disestablish the submissions committee. Um, number four, delegate authority to the chair and deputy in consultation with board members consider submission options. Five is delegate authority to approve, finalize and lodge the submissions. And six is authorising the board chair, deputy, or a member no nominated by both of them um, to then speak on behalf of a submission. 
um, and that all be reported back to the board for record keeping. So, well, this is one that we could perhaps um, vote on and then do a bit of debate after we make yeah. that statement coming. Sure. So, uh, can I have a mover for that? Well, just, well, we have any we might have a conflict of interest. Have we got any questions? Oh, your questions first. Conflict of interest. Well, if we, if the, if the, oh, yes, we'll speak to we, them. We're, we're going to be given that. Um, we should be not voting on that, I'm suggesting. Well, Sorry? Not. Well, if, if we were automatically on it, we're asking if, if everyone's going to vote. not a conflict of interest. It's not a conflict. No, 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 no. There's no pecuniary grain or anything. No. Okay. Any other questions before we move on? All makes sense? Okay. Good. Sorry for this on the area report, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's within. Um, can I, just, I do have some questions, actually, if I may. Yes, you may. So just on the ticket report. So, um, so not, a, not a lot of people, and this is very encouraging. <laughs> people are snap sending solving, solving, solving trees. Do we, do we, Page 85, is that what you're water, is it, So, mostly tree vegetation and water leaks. Do we have a bit of a sense of like where they're coming from or? What sort of things are, are on, you know, people are snaps in solving? I mean, the water supply, some of the water leaks, but what else? I'm just kind of interested to know because they, they're really high, you know, we've got many more incidents reported on those things than on other stuff. So the first two, vegetation and water supply, yeah, you'd, you'd like really a bit more detail about yeah, those. Quite good just mm -hmm. to sort of know what people are and where mm -hmm. they're coming from and that sort of stuff. It's kind of quite good data. So you'd like to know the geography? Yeah, geography, just yeah, just a bit more detail, eh? The sort of things people are calling in about. I'll see what we can easily get reported from the system. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't really use, good at I, yeah, I don't use it, but um okay. I mean just in general, just if we can just see what people are, are phoning in, just so they're yep. all, all across there. Okay. We can that's do just that. October, right? So I mean, Yeah, do it for a whole year. And, I mean, the water leaks are particularly quite high. Yeah. And one other comment that what is the. Pay for all of that, not to risk campaign, but. So. Yeah. We would like to know the response, yeah. response rate. Like, there are people we saw this morning, they are doing snaps and install. Mm -hmm. Are they being responded? At what rate those problems are being addressed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's your question? You want to yeah. know yeah. how many days yeah. it takes for someone yeah. to reply? Yes. Because you would like, and I have done a number of times, some have been uh, addressed and some I'm still waiting months on. And if I'm doing that, I'm sure other members of the community, sure. they're facing so the same issue. So how we could speed, speed that up if it is taking too long or how long it is taking and why it is they taking up. Yeah. So in that little bit where it says currently open tickets, there was 1,200, but that doesn't give us how long. Oh, I know it does. No, just yeah. underneath, 25% of them are less than 37 days old. 75% of them are less than, that means that they are 345 days old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Does that answer your question? No, it's it's not that how old those tickets launched are. When somebody launches a ticket, how long does it take for the council to address that issue okay. and solve that? And I guess it would depend yeah. on each particular area. Yeah. And because not each job will have the same urgency, so would they have a triage type scenario yeah. as well? So that's where your question comes handy. Would you like to hear a briefing? About like the, the, the leak that was on outside the clutch just there. Yeah. It's about two, two, two months. Yeah. It's about the for a yeah. like that. And I mean, it's probably worth repeating just in case anybody in the room missed it, but like Banks Peninsula has some massive water infrastructure mm -hmm. issues that somebody's going to have to pay for at some point. At some point, yeah. yes. Subtle. Well, <laughs> this is government funding to address some of the other. Just, <laughs> just really reminds me of the tickets and snaps and salt and the issue that was brought up this morning about holding and carts and things. Yes. And it's recently come up in the Bay as well. 
about the amalgamation and thanks to Nenza Council and Jeez. City Council, which I was going to raise for better off funding as an idea of that audit type stuff on what what are council assets, rolling reserves and all that sort of stuff to see how long things get amalgamated into process and 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 the results do come out in the snap sentence song on how long things take. Because I've escalated one of them mm -hmm. and it was, oh, Rodi should have done it, oh, no, Park should have done right, it, and so now it's going between. Okay. Yeah, so and it's, it's resolving from previous amalgamated. Yeah. So it's, and of course, our mm -hmm. um, situations, it's bubbling and it's all there, coming up again. There could be one yeah. of the issues actually, yeah. because the winery toilets issue that is not in the council okay. register the, that was raised a year ago. I'll ask everybody. Would it would it be helpful to get someone from customer services to give us a briefing about how this works and some of the data? Yeah, yeah. yes, that would okay. be great. Yeah, because we do have hearing hearing a lot of negative comments about okay. Um, right. We actually have an award winning customer services. We do. Across your city council. They are yeah. awesome. Yeah. But that's why we want to yeah. make sure that um, you know, all that communication, all the stuff we're hearing, we're being able to tell them, you know, this is, where's the disconnect? We need to solve that disconnect to make sure that carries on. Okay. The road parks thing is, is just a constant irritation. Yeah. That's mm. like, well, yeah. yeah it's, it's interesting, just, isn't it? Coming it's coming now. What? Yeah. Well, um, it, every now and again it comes up. It's not. All of a sudden, it's just. Some just give up by renewing by their own law. Wow. Yeah. So some yeah. assets are still being identified yeah. as having fallen through a gap between yeah. roading and parks mm -hmm. or not having been yeah. transferred in. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. that would be because yeah. Max and Salt would be being used more yes. and finding those places. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. someone would have thought yeah. of us, oh, someone's dealing with that. No, yeah. it's just a yeah. council yeah. issue. Yeah. But they're not. It's not yeah. being, it's, and then yeah. the information's going through. All right, I really want to go back to the board submission committee and get this sorted. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so you're moving, um, you're moving, receiving the report plus all of those extra yes. resolutions about the submissions committee. Yes. Disestablish delegates authority, delegates authority, and authorize. Yes. Okay. So, uh, do we have a mover for that? Nigel, no, seconder. Moana, all those in favour? Aye. All those against? I think that is carried. Thank you. Hopefully, I won't be talking to many of you about that over the holidays. All the things going well. Okay. Now we're into it. Oh, so we can go back and ask is there any other questions from the um, board area report? Four pen? I think, yeah. Have them all? Okay, yeah, great. So we'll move on to elected members of information exchange. Any reason? Hello, for the year, I've got so much to talk about. Start with Nigel. Um, yeah, I'll just a uh, couple of things. Civic Trust AGM it was an amazing success. Mm. Um, I think uh, it was incredible to see how many people turned up for it. There were over 150 people turned up right. to hear the speeches. And uh, that was great. Uh, Anuku, we're handing out um, some uh, uh, a program that's coming up in January. They want to hold a hui at Anuku to have a look at the environmental issues around the harbour and the hills. Um, it uh, was pretty much an open invitation, I believe. But if we can get more information on that and circulate it, it would be really good so that we can get people along to that hui. It's in January sometime. Um, yeah, and just on that, uh, the, the beach road strips, you yeah, know, that is an issue, that strip of road around there, this is a, very much a, uh, used by people going tramping. They go to the, um, it's, a, it's one way to get to Tashpaniki and the memorial. So there's a lot of people walking around that area. So um, uh, a big call out for that, and I really feel for Janice's uh, comments around that. Um, and just uh, briefly again on the French Festival, thank you for the 
um, letting me talk to that today and the ongoing funding is really about sustainability and it's such a big community event and I don't believe that you would get another festival anywhere in the country that um, engages as much community as this one does. Thank you. That's me. That's great. Thank you. Happy. Um, yeah, again about paths and things. So, yeah, just highlighted for me in our communities about that things that fall between the gaps, exploding paths, and that's it. Was really, um, yeah, that the conversations today just you know, um, kind of reinforced those gaps. Uh, um, 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 yeah, lots of community kind of end of year stuff, which is really nice to meet community. Uh, Christmas parties uh, and morning teas and things and it's well, great to, Saturday, didn't we? that's right Kathy, that's right um, what else happened oh and just one of the morning teas they talked about like the community network things I think some people in the groups are not like people that come to those network meetings know what it is but people that don't, don't so maybe yeah. that's a bit of kind of rebuilding the network yeah or what it's about, and uh, it's just something I picked up and thought, oh yeah, that's true, I haven't been for a while. Um, the Red Grounds meeting went well, Cast Bay's uh, pest control has been really good. They caught a stoat, I think the first stoat in the peninsula, in the peninsula trap in a while, maybe, or our part, so it was like, oh. um, The hub meetings were good. The community energy AGM went really well. And Tyrone chaired their first meeting, which is really cool. The community were invigorated. And that whole sort of, you know, community taking action for climate change was really good. So they've done, you know, follow-up stuff and they just like to energize themselves. Um, the community did the litter hunt. That was their fourth one. Uh, 15 participants collected about 42 kilos. And again, it just shows that um, recycling and waste is like 46 to 60, 40. So hopefully they will come to the board saying that, you know, there's recycling out there that should be recycled as opposed to be. Don't tell that. That's, 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 that's right. We were, all, we were at the... Uh, Thing there as well, and just really quickly, is the steadfast track opened? It feels like it is, but I haven't walked it. Kathy, isn't your um, husband like that's um, right? They're like it's in the track. <laughs> I think they came to a point, they're making the track, and the council's coming down. We're not sure if it's met, but if you look up, it looks like it might be joined. So someone has to just walk it. But they said before Christmas that yeah, should be out. Um, yeah, no, little, and um, once again with the fire presentations, it's almost like what next? Um, and whether we as a board would kind of advocate the next steps and with the what fire, you know, the fire presentation community came and talked about, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they kind of tried to do a follow up, and I didn't quite have an answer to the follow up, okay, though we acknowledge that they present to us, um, what's the next steps? Can we advocate? Um, and things like that. So, but I think they have to follow up, a, followed up yeah. with staff, aren't they? So they're looking yeah. with so that was just, it was just I said I said I'd mention it again. Okay, and that's you. it. Thank you. Right. Okay. Cool. If Dustin's your next, he's the one uh Rapaki Market last weekend, which was really well attended. Mm -hmm. uh, traffic management was really good. Uh, just a concern again, just reiterating um, overgrown grass around the peninsula over the summer mm -hmm. coming up in particular, if, if anything has been done about that. Uh, also notice with the warmer weather, um, I'm going to get my drum out, boy races and... and um, motorcyclists for some reason it, it seems to be a nightly thing at the moment so I'm not too sure what's going on there um, particularly the noise uh, coming up to summer I don't know if everyone saw the article in the paper I think it was either yesterday or the day before John Cotier from Rapaki yes. uh, just around the state of the harbours at the moment yeah. uh, 
really concerning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So thinking about things like development, what are the plans in place for development? Um, you know, pressures on infrastructure. Uh, all of those things we really need to consider. It's um, shocking, shocking to think that our kids can't swim in that water anymore or gather kaimoana. So yeah. um, I really think that's a priority coming up. Uh, it's, you know, as, as a, in case I didn't mention it earlier, we do have some really serious water infrastructure yeah. problems around. Mm. 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 <laughs> it needs yeah. to be paid for in yeah. some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Can I just put me on that? Oh, no, we're just in the middle of our Oh, no. Just say good on you, Yeah. 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 Um, no, no, so that's it. That, that's it. So, yeah, I just really want to draw attention to that. Maybe next year, um, can we have potentially people in from the council to talk about those issues in terms of infrastructure? I know there's a, potentially a lot of building happening in Kiss Bay. How is it going to be managed? Um, okay. Forest is still continuing. Yeah, can, I, can I just quickly add to that? Because yeah. I, I, I think if we really need to have that briefing back about that. We had that ECAN um, uh, presentation. Akara Harbour is, is unsafe, but you know the ones around the tip of the bays, like Takapu, are fair. Uh, we need to have a briefing to say what's going to be done about it. We had money from the government to fix it. It's obviously not fixed. If you know okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Have a brief. Pass it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple of things. I'll start while we are discussing harbour. Um, swimming. I think um that presentation by EK and there was very helpful last time. Um, there is severe loop uh, leak into mm -hmm. the harbour, so we cannot just. You know, put it science said no swimming. So that is not the solution. We are looking the other way. Other way, we are not addressing the problem here. So our Tyrone is here and he's here. Is there a way that we could find a way to address this leakage? And I'm sure if it is happening in Accra, it is happening in, in Littleton and Rapaki and other right. places as well. Um, Severe leak, and that is the main reason but because you took like five to leak, right? um, no, it just... could be any, oh. we don't know. Um, you know, it's a silver, they can find faces in the harbor, and that could come from the main lake. So, by putting a sign that not healthy for swimming, don't swim, that is not the solution. Uh, so, we have to seriously look into when we are while we are working on the LTP. And um, while Vanessa is here, she can take some message home as well that uh, these are serious issues. Mm -hmm. And um, we talked about earlier um, swimming pool and you know swimming and safe uh, swimming for our children that um, they need to access these waters to be able to learn and be safe in water. Um, so that is uh, I'd like to mentioned that um right. you know thank you um and um heritage car park i think we had a field visit uh, so that was really good nigel was there um <clears throat> so i think we are <clears throat> heading into the far direction um and preschool was grateful for receiving the fund so i think in next month or so they will be starting working on they thank the board for this thank you that's all from me. Okay. Thank you. We need to go. Tyrone and Yeah, I'd just like to support ESSIF and the um, swimming is actually very important to the whole community, but generally we're pretty good. Summer's here, Christmas is here, let's party. Jump off the water and have a swim. Um, okay, I'll, yeah. I'll just work backwards. So yesterday I was at the so, you know, the St. Joseph's, the worker church, and we were going to come over in the earthquake. So we had a had a celebration of the memorial that's um, been created to, well, to memorialise it um, yesterday. So that was really nice because this board has contributed to that. And um, a lot of our staff have contributed to that, in particular, um, Philippa. Um, and, and the heritage team, so that's pretty cool. Um, my 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 best mate um, contributed probably about fifty grand's worth of pro, pro pro bono work on the design of that, so it was pretty it was pretty good. Anyway, that was a nice event. Um, moving backwards, do, 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 do. What, what, what do I want to talk about? Um, so 
Sorry. Just that oh yeah, he t- I just want to mention the UTEP Broadway um, meeting that we had the other day, Mike. I just really felt that we're making some really good progress on that now. I feel like we've kind of just got through a bit of a hump. And I just want to just uh, thank you to Natasha Virashi, who's done mm-hmm. some really awesome work on that and other staff as well. So, so it's good, it's good to see. Hopefully we'll get all of that connected up. That's you know the not too distant future. I mean, you know. So that's an ongoing thing, really. Um, oh, I was over at O'Kane's Bay last Sunday. I was on the chair of the board, as you all know. And um, we had a, we welcomed the Thacker family, biggest Thacker gathering probably for quite some time to the museum to sort of unveil a celebration of Murray's, Murray Thacker's Life, I guess, um, just at the museum. So I think that was a very nice thing. So just um, it's an incredible museum. And he set up a museum, didn't he? Mm. Mm-hmm. He did. Started it always feared and back, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So the trust meeting was pretty amazing. Um, not to mention that. Um, what else did I want to say? Can we come back to you? Uh, that's probably, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of other things that I probably. Oh, Actually, just for you, Luana, like I caught up with the bloke from uh, Tony Weber from, from Governor's Bay, just around, um, just trying to connect him into the DC. So I've got concerns about antisocial road use as well. And uh, and he was really keen to do something. I was sort of connected up to the Bay people and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so, so I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what we're going to resolve. But we're, yeah, we're sort of inching towards that. Yeah. And um, the council C resigned in the last month, so you know okay. everything's fine. <laughs> 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 right. Thank you. Uh, I'll so, so would you be good at news? Okay. You basically brief about that one. Did you um, say Tuesday? Did I hear Tuesday? I will talk about a uh, little river and what you want. So, right. lots on the go, actually. So, and talk about infrastructure that's very much needed right now. Lots of buses coming through, and the toilets are going to be updated any time now. Really, they're going to get new uh, water tanks, so that allows them to keep flushing because they have a very limited supply. So then they won't be just getting messy, which is great. Uh, we've got the drainage down the side of the village, which is being filled in, so we won't have any more um, wedding vehicles oh, really? stuck in it and wait for the car out. So that's really <laughs> uh, nice. So that, that will be able to be parked on, uh, and hopefully that will go well. And then the Coronation Library is due to start after any time, soon after the consents have been put through. So some really exciting long-term stuff that's been in the pipeline for a very, very long time, pipeline mm-hmm. for a very long time. And uh, they are coming into fruition in the river. And it's been a lot of hard work, you know, many people before me, there's Tory, um, you know, all the way back, but there's also the Little River Way of Community Trust in the mm-hmm. community who have done lots of hard work to get that up and going. Uh, as far as Cheer stuff. So we had a cheer person forum update just recently in regards to um, you know what how things are going at the council right now. And just report back that you know the ship is you know it's on course and it's steady as she goes. Uh, and the long term plan. I'm sure there'll be lots of bustling around over Christmas about that. Um, another question that I had in regards to these cheer forums that we have once a month. Is uh, does the board want to get the notes from these forums? Because some of them can tend to be quite interesting, like the last one that we had, discussions and questions we quite often bring from the board, uh, answers at the final level, or is that just one more email? To do both. See how we go and let me know. Okay, all right, I'll send them on and then it's up to you whether you read them or if you decide not, it's just clogging it up too much. See how you go. Do that. And um, yeah, well, it's coming towards Christmas time, if it comes here. And I just want to take the opportunity at the end of the year to say a big thank you to all of you, each and every one of you, and a well done because this year has had its ups and its downs and uh, some really big wins. And I think the destination management plan crossing the finish line was one of those big wins after six years of the pipeline. 
And it was a really big one in particular. Not to mention we've had some great stuff coming through um, that help uh, elected members and staff alike. Thank you very much. You've been working hard on. And it takes all of us and the community to make those wins happen. So I just want to send you all off to end the meeting with a very Merry Christmas. And I hope that's restful and um, we're filling new year. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think with that, unless there's anything else. Could I just check for one thing? So I've got a couple of um, actions from the four, uh, from your elected members exchange. Yes. Um, so Nigel, if we can get some information from Onuku around the Hui, we can certainly promote that yes, through the board's web page and um, community notices. Um, and Little from Harbour Network is being reviewed at the moment about how we promote okay. that and what have you, give it a bit of a zhuzh up. Mm -hmm. um, Luana would like, well, you, the board would like a briefing on this sediment in the harbour and what have you. So that's an ECAN, that's an ECAN thing, discharging into the harbour and the same for the sewer leaks into the harbour. It's an ECAN responsibility to manage discharge into the harbour. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth because you've just had Ekin mm -hmm. talking about all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't had the pipe, there's probably obviously break and breakages in the pipes and things because it's Afra Harbour's poor, Takamatu is fair, and the ocean is fair, so it's very much localized to here, yeah. which uh, and it's a human fecal. Matter. Yep. It's not geese. So it's they, they, they just know that they are working on that. So what they have to do is start back. You know, it's kind of like a process of elimination. So I think they are beginning that process. Well, that's but it's going to take a long had to three over three million dollars to fix it as yes. part of the yeah. from the government. Um, I, I, I guess <coughs> my question is, are they not fixing some things because they are going to be fixed when the new sewage system goes in? I think they fix what they find. What I understood. Okay, well, let's get a little bit of information around that yeah. then. Let's, yeah, see really if they're yeah. still, yeah. let's yeah. find out if they're still looking yeah. or if they're just by complaint or by incident. Yeah, yeah. we'll yeah. try and get a little Perfect. bit more Perfect. understanding yeah. around that. All right, that's, <coughs> let's get that's it for my hand. That to LTP. What's that? that. Talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah. Is side. there a possibility to add uh, that uh, maintenance or checking those zero in the LTP, bringing that? Well, we need to know what they're currently doing as mm. to whether or not you need to know. Yeah. So we need to clarify more. what they're already doing before we ask them to do something that they're there. Okay. So, yeah, we'll follow that. Okay, thank Time you. Right. I'm sorry because you've wrapped up. You yeah, wrapped totally wrapped up. Things right. so, so nicely, but I don't forget two critical things actually. One is, <laughs> one is the what Donald Trust has appointed a, yeah. a new manager. Oh, right. Great, Charlie Washington. Does he yep. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for two, I was very neglectful in not mentioning that I attended the opening of the memorial entrance for the cemetery over here in Akadoa oh, a nice. couple of weeks ago because that's something that had been thinking the railings that have been in the pipeline for yeah, a few years. It was just really nice just to sort of see that. And I was just absolutely, yeah. everyone was just really buzzing about that. So, mm -hmm. so that was really just a good. Good, good news story of things that the board council and kind of eventually, you know, it's been a journey. Anyway. Would you like to do a Merry Christmas from the council to finish something like that? No. We wish you Merry Christmas. I've already asked for more place for Christmas. Yay, let's stand for the closing part of here, please. Thank you. So let's Thank you. Thank you.